I do feel it's important to share what the Lord has given me this morning, and I think it's going to minister to you, especially <coughs> with the theme of this service. I think it's important. I want you to turn to the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 13 and 14. Then we'll be reading from the book of James, chapter 3. Romans 8, 13 and 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name that you lead us and allow us, Lord, to speak the words that you've given to us this morning. And I pray, Father, that they will give us some direction and help us in our everyday walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To be led of the Spirit means you must also hear from the Spirit. And so, as this entire service has gone, sometimes, how many of y'all have ever been, you hear something and you feel something in your spirit and you say, is that you, God? Was that, was that you, Lord? How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And that's the title of the message, Is That You, God? How do I know that it's God? How often does God get the blame for our actions or conversations when it was truly us and not Him? A lot of times we'll say, well, God told me to do so and so. And we're not really sure whether God really did or really didn't. And we're going to look at some evidences today and some things to look for when you feel like that God is speaking to you, some things from the Scripture that will help you determine whether it's God or whether it's you or whether it's the devil. There's three voices vying for your attention. God wants to speak to you, as Paul already mentioned. God desires to commune with his sheep. Okay, And he says, my sheep will know my voice. Right? Then, of course, the devil wants to commune with you. Now, he's the accuser. So you already have two different uh, voices that are so, uh, so opposing of one another that it really would not be hard to discern one from the other, except there's a voice in the middle that really gets it confused, and that's yours and mine. And we really get it confused because we muddle it up. And a lot of times, of course, the voice of the enemy is, is appealing to our flesh. And so we're trying to battle what our flesh is saying as opposed to what God is saying to us through His Spirit. Now, we know that God spoke throughout all the Bible. You know, Elijah heard the still small voice, right? He wasn't, in the, he wasn't in the fire. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the whirlwind. That he was in the still small voice. We all saw Daniel heard from God, but there was one specific time when uh, Daniel had the handwriting on the wall. You know, that would be nice if God would write it all out for us, wouldn't it? Guess what? He did. It's right here. <laughs> There's your handwriting on the wall right there. Okay, so he did write it out. Uh, how can I determine if I'm hearing from God? Have y'all ever asked that question? Is it something you ponder about? How can I determine if I'm hearing from God? I want us to go over to the book of James, chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 14 through 17. Well, let's get up to verse 13, Robbie. Go ahead and let, go up one verse. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist... Confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above, say above, above. is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Without hypocrisy. So we have here before us, we have two sets of wisdom. We have wisdom that's from God or heaven, and we have wisdom that is not from heaven. 
that comes from the dark side. I want to first of all, and now in, in thinking of this, I want you to think of what, what, how God speaks to you, and the fact that God is going to speak to you as He speaks through His Word. Now, this is not going to be all inclusive. There will be times when God may speak to you, and and it's and it may sound harsh, okay. But it will also be constructive. God will speak to you. We're going to look at, at, at the area of wisdom, speaking, God speaking to us from the wisdom that is in heaven, and the enemy speaking to us through the wisdom that is from the earth that is sensual and demonic. When the devil is talking to you, it is demonic. You hear me? When the devil is talking to you, it is demonic. That doesn't mean that you're demon-possessed. But it does mean that demons, a demonic spirit, the evil, the dark side, is actually talking to you. Now, I don't, I don't want the devil talking to me, but he does. And he'll lead you to do and say things that are ungodly. He will lead you to do things that are not good but are rather harmful. Why do you think there are splits in churches? Do you think God is speaking to those people or do you think the devil is getting in and stirring things up? And people are listening to the enemy, right? That's normally what happens. Uh, there, I, I know people that listened to the enemy yesterday. Wisdom from heaven, first of all, if God is speaking to you, you've got to ask eight questions. You got your ink pen ready? Now, these aren't going to be on the screen, okay? You're going to have to listen to me, but they're short, and you'll be able to write them down. If it's God speaking to you, there's eight questions that you need to ask, and this all comes from the book of James. First of all, is it pure and wholesome? Is what is, is what is being told to you or what you're feeling that is being spoken to you, is it pure and wholesome? Okay? I see somebody still looking for an ink pen. Is that you, Lisa? There's one. They're going to hand it back to you. Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. Now she's got three or four. <laughs> so you've got to ask yourself, is it pure and wholesome. God is not going to speak to you something that is impure. And He's not going to tell you to do something that is not pure. God is not going to have you go outside and beat somebody to a pulp. Now I heard one guy say one time, you know, this guy was just really challenging me and challenging him and challenging him. And when he, he said, and he knew he was a Christian, he knew he wasn't going to beat him up because he was a Christian. But he got to the place, the guy just kept on. He said, I tell you what, I'm fixing to leave Jesus in the house and I'm going to come out here and I'm going to beat the daylights out of you and then I'm going to go back in and pick him up. Now, he was not being led of the Spirit there, okay? (laughs) He was being led of the flesh. So just don't tell somebody, God told me to beat you up. (laughs) That's not God. That's either you or the devil. Probably more you than the devil. Because you just want to get your hands dirty. Secondly, does it lead to peace? Does it lead to peace? God is not the author of confusion and turmoil. God is not the author of confusion and turmoil. That does not come from God. That is not God telling you to stir that pot. God didn't give you a stick and say, now go stir it up. God's going to give you things that are going to lead to peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. Oh, that we were peacemakers instead of troublemakers. Oh, that we would be peacemakers and not troublemakers. Third thing. Oh, this is a good one. 
Is it going to cause me to be submissive? Does this, does, God, God wants us to be submissive. Or am I going to push to get my own way? If you're having to push to get your own way, you're not being submissive. And God's not going to lead you to a place where you've, got to, where you've got to run over people to get your way. I read something last night that was real interesting. It was talking about how people do at work. You know, they go to work and... How many of y'all put up with a lot of stuff at work that you, wouldn't, that you normally wouldn't put up with, but you know you've got to have a job? All right, but the first little the first little person that crosses you at church, well, I'm just leaving there. <laughs> Boy, I'm not going to put up with them people anymore. Oh, so your job's more important than your place of worship. I don't go into meddling, huh? We will put up with stuff from the world that we will not allow our, our fellow Christian, our fellow believer. We want, to, we want everybody in here to be perfect like I am. Good luck. Boy, if they could just do it the way I think it ought to be done, just think how, it would, how good it would be. Well, <laughs> David Dixon sent me a message today. He said to tell you Lottie D and Lottie D. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a good place to put it. <laughs> no. God's going to lead you into a place. Now, God wants you to be a leader, but when God is speaking to you, He also wants you to understand that we walk in submission to our brother. Paul said this. He said that we are to exalt our brother, right? We're to take the, the way of humility. Did Jesus ever exalt Himself in, among the sinners and the publicans? No. Now, among the religious crowd, he called them out. But we understand today. So is it submissive? Then God may be speaking to you. If it leads you to a place of submission, God, that may be from God. Fourthly, is it considerate of the rights and feelings of others? Well, I don't care what they think. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You do care what people think. I hear people say that. I don't care what they think about me. And then you go home and cry. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I think I'll eat some worms. <laughs> Nobody hates me. No. <laughs> Could I? The fourth one is, is it considerate of the rights and feelings of others? God will give you words that are going to, that where He's going to have you consider the feelings of other people. Okay? That's just that, that's, that's, that's the character of God. Does God consider your feelings? How many of y'all, God has hurt your feelings in the last week? He's hurt your pride. Okay, he's hurt your pride, but I'm talking about he's just made you feel real sad. I mean, he just chewed you out down one side and down the other and then left you to sit there and wallow in it. How, but how many of y'all have chewed somebody else out and left up one side down the other and left them there to wallow in it? How many times? When God tells you to go to somebody with a word of correction... The Word of God gives you an idea of how to do it. He said, if somebody has offended you, you go to that person yourself, and then if they don't receive it, then you go and get somebody else, and you take that person and you go to them, and then if they won't get it, you get the whole church and you, and, and you come together and you come to a conclusion. But never does God say that you go down there and you dress that person down and you walk off and you leave them right there all scalded, hurt, and ruined, and bleeding without applying a little bit of balm of Gilead. So if God's telling you to just go and chew somebody up and spit them out, you better make sure that you take the balm of Gilead with you. 
It's probably not God. You're right. Well, according to, to James, that's, that's not wisdom from God. That's wisdom from, from not from heaven. Let's quit trying to do God's business for him. Let's go about the Father's business as He guides us and leads us. Remember the first scripture I read from the book of Romans that said that we are led by the Spirit. We're led by the Spirit. Now these are some, these are some ways that we find out because God is going to lead us from wisdom from heaven, right? Amen. So this tells us some of that wisdom. The fifth thing, oh, this is a good one. Is this leading from God full of mercy or is it judgment? Is this leading from God full of mercy or is it full of judgment? Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. How many of y'all are glad that God is, is your God of mercy? Every day. What if God judged us every day for our wrongs? We'd be in trouble with it. Then let's quit judging other people for their wrongs. Let's, let's stop that. Let's stop that. That's something that God is... I've been, I've been thinking and going over this in my mind for, for three or four weeks. As, as I look back on my childhood and the way I was raised and brought up in church, it, it, it's, not that, it's, it's not troubling me, okay? It's not troubling me. But I look back and I say, you know what? I was raised in a, in a church that expected perfection from everybody except the person who expected it. They expected perfection from everybody except the one who was expecting it. I expect you to be perfect, but I'm not going to be. Brother, you're an ordained minister. you got to be perfect. Did you know that? You can't mess up. No sorry. You're held to that high standard. Now, I do believe we're held to higher standards. But you see, here's the deal. We expect so much of other believers that we don't even demand of ourselves. And we tell, say, God's leading us. Now, I want to put on my spiritual ears and my spiritual eyes and I want to hear from the Holy Spirit just like you do. I want to walk in His goodness. I want to walk in His mercy. But I want to be a person that's going to come up to somebody and give them a word of encouragement that's not going to walk away and say, You're going to hell, brother, if you smoke another cigarette. Turn or burn. Heaven or hell, turn or burn. Now, hell is real. Hadn't been there. Don't want to find out. Don't want to see what it's like. I'm going to take God's word for it. Now, if you want to go check it out, you just go on. If you want to go find out what it's all about, you just go on. But I don't care nothing about finding out what it's really like. I'm going to take God's word for it. But I can promise you this. I need to treat people the same way that God treats me. And if I'm going to speak for God, I need to understand that God is going to speak to me and He's going to give me words of peace and comfort. He is not going to leave me scathing under the hot, boiling sun and leave me there to die and wither away. And I can't treat people the same way. And then say it's from God. So does it bring mercy? Does this word that God is speaking to you, is it a word that's going to bring mercy or is it going to bring judgment? Now we'll get to some things about the prophetic in a minute that may differ just a little bit with that. Will this leading, the, the, the sixth thing, will this leading bear good fruit? Will this voice that you're hearing, this leading from the Holy Spirit, God giving you a word, is it going to bear good fruit? After all, we're supposed to be fruit producers, right? So is it going to bear rotten fruit? My, I'm going to tell you, y'all, honestly, I know a lot of Christians that just have borne a whole lot of rotten fruit. A whole lot of rotten fruit. Matter of fact, there's, there's so many old apple cores out there. You could play that old game, apple core, Baltimore, you know, who's it you are, and threw them with the apple core. 
You never heard of that. Where did you, where was you raised at? You never heard that? Apple core. Baltimore. Who's it? Who's your friend? And then you throw an apple core and hit them in the back with it. Man, we, no, we went out there under the apple tree in my, in my uncle's yard and we'd get apples and eat them, and then old green apples, and then we'd play apple core. Lee Berger knew it. And he was raised in, he was raised in Inslee. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who used eggs? <laughs> I'd rather use the apple core, brother. <laughs> Will it bear good fruit? Is this word that you think is from God, is it going to bear good fruit? Number seven, is this leading that you feel, is it impartial or is it driven by your personal agenda? (laughs) Is it impartial or is it driven by your personal agenda? Boy, you can get in trouble with your personal agenda. Are you really hearing from God or is it just your idea? Number eight. Is it sincere or without hypocrisy? In other words, is what you're going to tell somebody else to do consistent with the way you live? Without or without hypocrisy. That's what James was saying. It's not hypocritical. In other words, it's not telling somebody else to do something that you do yourself. That's hypocrisy. Well, Brother Vincent, I really think you ought to spend six hours a day in prayer. Are you? God told me to tell you, Randy... God told me to tell you, Randy, that you're not praying enough. You work hard. Seriously. God's most likely not going to tell you to tell somebody to do something that you're not already doing. Okay? Because then that makes you hypocritical. And God doesn't want you to be hypocritical. And we're real good at giving direction to the church without taking any ourselves. We're real good at giving direction to the pastor or the, or the worship pastor. Really, Paul, I heard from God, brother, and I think in order to really be an effective worship leader, bud, you, you, need, to, you need to cut all that hair off again. God told me. Yeah, you did. And God told him to, right? He sure did. That's what he said. And how many songs had he written? Zero. Zero. That's called hypocritical, and it was not from God. That's hypocritical. When you are going to tell somebody else how to act, and you act totally different from them, you are being a hypocrite. Yeah, I went there, didn't I? And I've heard people say, I'm not going to that church nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. They're all going to hell. Well, just go ahead and go to hell with them. You'll end up, I'd rather go to church with them than hell with them. (laughs) And you? (laughs) I'd rather go to church with them than end up in hell with them. All right, so there's eight things to know when it is from God. Some some ways to, to, this isn't all inclusive. Now I want to look at seven quick things of wisdom that is not from heaven. These are ways to determine that this, this really isn't from God. <laughs> okay, this, this will help you. First of all, number one, is it carnal? Is it carnal? <clears throat> Fleshly, earthly. If it is, reject it. It's not from God. 
God does not lead you into carnality. Well, God, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is the only illustration I can think of right now, okay, because I didn't write one down. But so this is not shedding light on whether what I'm going to talk about is right or wrong. So I, I give that, for, okay, but, but here's the deal. Lord, should I really go in that bar? <laughs> you, you know I'm going to go in there and witness, don't you? Now, if you're going in there to witness, the Holy Spirit will probably lead you. But if you're not going in there to witness, he's probably going to say, nah, I believe I'd stay away from there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, dri- driving down to, to, uh, to Florida, I don't forgot the name of it because I try to ignore it, but there's, there's this, uh, what's the name? It's these big pink, these big, these big pink billboards. Cafe Risque. Show girls. We bear all. Y'all, I don't have to pray whether God's going to lead me in there or not. Y'all hear me? And if I hear something say, you ought to stop there, I can guarantee you that's not God speaking to me. And it's probably not even the devil, it's probably my own flesh. Is it earthly, carnal? Sensual, devilish. Should I go to that Wicca meeting? Do what? If you're going to go in there and talk to them about Jesus, if you go run them out with the Word of God, I guess so. But secondly, is what I'm hearing, the voice I'm hearing, is it based on the character of God? Is it based on the character of God? Now, if you don't know God's character, it's time you get acquainted with Him. Because you're going to have a hard time discerning what's from God and what's not if you don't know God's character. Third, do you sense even a hint of the dark side? If you discern even a hint of the dark side. And what I mean by that, iniquity, evil, harm, fear. God is a God of faith, not of fear. He doesn't give us a spirit of fear. So if this brings a spirit of fear, even a hint of a spirit of fear, reject it. Now, I'm not talking about, okay, let me give an example here. Dan and I are going to Cuba. In less one month from yesterday, four weeks from yesterday, we got a little more money to raise too. If y'all get the drift, uh, but anyway, uh, so there's a little bit of you know in, in praying about what there's a little bit of anxiety. I've never been to Cuba. I've never spoken with an interpreter. So since I'm feeling that little bit of anxiety, does that mean that this can't be from God? No, that's not what I'm talking about. That's anticipating something that God is going to do. That's a respect to want to do the very best that I can do for God, okay? That's not the kind of fear that's going to bring darkness into my life, okay? It's not that kind of fear. But the fear that will bring darkness is not from God. And if, it's, if God tells you to tell the church something or a friend something and it's going to cast them into darkness of any kind, Reject it. If it's going to cast you into any kind of darkness, doubt, or unbelief, then it is not from God. Okay? It's not from God. Number four. If it shows the slightest hint of envy in regard to another person. Dan, I've always wanted a Mustang convertible. And I was praying the other night. And God told me to tell you, you're supposed to give me that Mustang. That's envy. That's not from God. Not only is it stupid, it's not from God. Now, here's what would happen if that was from God. Dan would come up to me and say, Pastor, I was praying 
and God told me that you had always wanted a Mustang. You know what I'm going to do? He told me to give that Mustang to you. And after I got up off the floor, <laughs> then I would take the keys from him. But when it's envy on your part, when it's envy on your part, when you're wanting something that somebody else has, but you're not willing to pay the price to get it, and you'd rather have God give it to you, that's not from God. That's envy and jealousy. And that's not God. Well, you got it. I want it too. I had somebody tell me last night, well, you did such and 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 such. Why did you do that to me, but you don't do that to them? Because that's envy and jealousy, and I'm the pastor, and I can do that if I want to. And that's what I said. And you say, well, are they here today? Nope. That's okay. I'm okay with that. Because you know what? Nobody, nobody is going to manipulate me by telling me God told me to tell you. Nobody is going to manipulate me by telling me God told me to tell you. That doesn't mean I won't listen. But I'm not going to be manipulated by it. That's called spiritual manipulation when you throw God into everything as if God talks only to you and nobody else. Spiritual manipulation, you find it, spiritual abuse throughout the church, you find it everywhere you go as people are spiritually abused because they are too lazy to listen to God for themselves and they're following every word that comes from the mouth of somebody else because they're too immature to get in the word of God and look at somebody and say, God didn't tell you that. I told a person that one time. They don't have much to say to me anymore. They called me one day and said, God told me this and this and this and this. And I said, no, God didn't tell you that. The Holy Spirit didn't tell you that. This person told you that. Right. Oh, no, they didn't. I said, oh, yes, they did. <laughs> because what was being told was hurting somebody else. What was being told was damaging another person's character that wasn't true. God doesn't damage you. God doesn't have evil out for you. God is not out to destroy you. God is for you. He is not against you. And if God be for you, nobody can be against you. Number five. Kind of goes along with the other one, but it's selfish ambition. Is it just to advance yourself? If it's just to advance yourself at the expense of other people, that's wisdom from the earth and not from God. That is sensual, evil, and earthly. Number six. Does this word... Or this voice or this leading, does it leave you feeling unsettled and with no inner peace? That's disorder. That's disorder. Does it leave you feeling without inner peace? People will call me and they'll say, I'm praying about such and such and I don't know whether to make this decision or this decision. And here's what I always tell them. So, if you ever need to call me about a decision, this is what I'm going to tell you. You can still call, but this is what I'm going to tell you. Pray until you get peace with whichever decision. If, if, you, if, if you feel like you're led to do this, and you don't have any peace about it, don't do it. Now, here's, here's a good saying. When in doubt, cast it out. When in doubt, cast it out. When in doubt, cast it out. If you still have doubt about that decision, just hold off until God either says that's not it or you get peace. And if you don't ever get peace, then don't ever do it. 
So if this, this voice that's, that's talking to you is causing you to have no peace and being unsettled or disorder in your mind, disorder in your spirit, do you know what I'm talking about when I talk about being disordered in your spirit? You're confused in your spirit, man. Your mind is confused. You're thinking you hear from God, and, but you don't really know. That's disorder. My sheep shall hear my voice. That's confidence. If it's bringing an unsettledness, then that is no, most likely not God speaking to you. Okay. Number seven. Is there even a trace of evil Associated with where, with where this leading will take you. And that's talking about in the spirit world or in the earthly realm. Is there even a trace of evil of where this leading will take you? In the spirit realm or in the earthly realm? If God's leading you to walk into a church and split it, that's not God. It's not God just not God. Now, nobody's walked in here attempting that, y'all. Just so anybody says, boy, what's he saying that for? That's not what I'm... I'm telling you, though, that people lay blame at God's feet for things of that nature. And that's not going to be named among us at RCF. That's not going to be named among us. If you have to get people to, to join your side in order to get your way, that's not from God. That is not from God. Now, it's passed off as being from God leading, but it is not from God. Absolutely not from God. Now, i got to hurry. Are, are y'all ready for me to close or you want me to finish? All right, hearing, hearing from God through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, we're talking, this, this is a different kind of area here. But quickly, I want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for what? The profit of all. So if the Holy Ghost is going to speak in a service, what's, he going to, what's it going to do? It's going to profit everybody, right? It's going to bring profit. It's going to help. It's going to encourage. Okay, now then look at uh, this. With this potential spiritual gift, will this potential, potential spiritual gift advance the common good of everybody? Will this word that, I'm, that God is going to use me to give to the church, maybe God tells you on a Sunday morning before you even get to church and he begins to speak to you and says, I've got a word that I want to give to the church today. And so if the way to say, well, was that really God or was that me? Well, is this going to, is this going to bring encouragement to the body of Christ? Is this going to bring profit to everybody? Is this, going to, is this going to increase the common good of the church? Or is it going to lead everybody dumbfounded and confused and say, why in the world did they do that? Okay? Now then, it says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. The, so the, the, the prophecy is done in love. So it's going to benefit you and everyone that hears the prophecy. It's going to benefit them if they will receive it. We find that, does it resound? Let's go ahead and read uh, uh, through forth here. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who speaks, who prophesies, speaks edification. Read that with me. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. That's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. You seek spiritual gifts not so that you will excel, but that the church will excel. So that the church will expel, excel, not you. That's preferring your brother before yourself. So, yeah, desire spiritual gifts, but make sure you have the right reason that you're desiring for God to speak through you, that it helps somebody else. Every message that I prepare, 
And I'm sure any other preacher in here, every message that I prepare, I have to ask myself the question, is this going to answer somebody's question? Is this going to help the church? Is this going to give instruction? Is this going to edify? Is it going to comfort somebody? Or am I going to go in there and I'm going to skin the sheep from hither, from head to toe and then I'm going to say, bye, y'all, we'll see you tonight. Probably won't see very many. Now, does that mean we don't give correction? Of course not. Does that mean we don't preach about hell? Of course we do. Does that mean that, that God doesn't give us a word sometimes that is harsh because we need to hear it? But He always does it with love. He always does it with the care of our well-being at, at hand. And I'm afraid that too many Christians are laying on to God what they want to say for themselves and saying, God told me. And I've given you some ideas here of how to, how to do that. Does, does this word resound in my heart with love for those who it will be given? You see, I love you. I mean that. I love you. And I want to give you the very best that God will give me. That's why I look so forward to Sunday mornings. That's why I look forward to preaching because I'm wanting to give you something that God has given me that I think is going to help you. I felt like today, that I know I didn't start preaching until a quarter to twelve, but I, but I wanted to share this word with you because I know that God is speaking to you. I know that God is talking to you. I know that in your prayers because I see it in your lives. I hear it in your voice. I see it on your eyes, in your eyes that you're wanting to hear from God. You truly have a desire to do the very best that you can are we all making mistakes you better believe it we're all making mistakes we all make mistakes every day we say things we don't mean we do things that we didn't want to do as a matter of fact we follow Paul in Romans chapter 7 and 8 I do the things I don't want to do sometimes I do things that I didn't want to do I, did, I didn't want to do that but I did it anyway it's this spiritual battle that goes on but there's a, there's a, a motivation in me there's a motivation in the ministry. There's a motivation in Paul. There's a motivation in Brett. There's a motivation in Andy, Robbie, all of us, these, our board members. There's a motivation here that we want to give you the very best that God gives us. Amen. And it's always done in love. Never for self-promotion. Never for self-promotion. That's how I know. If it's promoting me and me alone, then you don't need to hear it. But if it's promoting Him, you need to hear it. Lastly, any voice or any word you get from God will always line up with Scripture. It will always agree with Scripture. The Word of God is the ultimate and primary provision that we have in order to discern what is and what isn't from God. This right here. Because this is from God. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is from God. This is from God. Your Bible is from God. And ultimately, everything we hear from God has to line up with this. And if it don't, then it's not from God. It's not from God. When determining a leading, when determining a leading from God, ask this question: Does this leading line up with clear statements of God's word, the Bible? Does it line up with clear statements from God's word? Does it line up with clear statements from God's word? In conclusion, God always has and always will speak to His people. God always has, and He always will. God's voice has not been silenced. CNN can't silence his voice. MSNBC cannot silence his voice. ABC, CBS, NBC, or Fox News, none of them have silenced the voice of God. The only way God's voice gets silenced is if we quit listening. He's still going to talk, but are you going to listen? Are you going to listen? God has always spoken to His people, and He always will. So remember, there's three voices wanting your attention. God, first of all. In the garden, after Adam sinned, who went looking for Adam? God did. 
Hey, Adam, where are you? God was wanting to talk. And Adam was hiding. Are you hiding? Are you hiding? Because of something that you've done and you're thinking God's going to be ashamed of you? That God's going to be mad at you? God says, I'm, I'm out here, I'm talking to you. Would you just listen? Would you listen with your ears? And then there's the voice of the devil. Just like in the garden with the serpent sitting up on in, in Eve's ear telling her, oh no, God didn't mean that. God didn't mean it that way. God didn't mean it the way you took it. I'm telling you, if it's said it in the Bible, that's the way God meant it. Don't argue with the Bible. Well, it really didn't mean that. Guess what it did too? It really did mean when it says, many shall come before me and say, uh, I did this in your name and I did this in your name and he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Guess what that means? That means he never knew them and they're going to depart. You can't sugarcoat that. You cannot sugarcoat it. Would you bow your head with me? Then there's your voice. And many times yours tries to become the voice of reason. But if you haven't renewed your mind, even your reason is going to be short-sighted. Your reasoning will talk you out of what God wants you to do and into what the devil wants you to do.